What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video we're going to be talking about thermal efficiency in Revit. Why is thermal efficiency important when it comes to building creation and building design? And uh, also I'm going to be showing you some practical uh, use inside of Revit, what Revit has to offer when it comes to uh, thermal efficiency and uh, thermal analysis. Uh, now, uh, before we move to that, I would just like to mention that this video uh, has been created in, col in collaboration with NumFem, uh, which is uh, this amazing plugin that has been designed to work uh, as a program for computing or calculating thermal bridges uh, all inside of Revit. So as far as I know, uh, on the market today, we don't really have any other program that works inside of Revit as a, as a plugin and it calculates everything, the uh, all of the thermal bridges inside of Revit. Uh, so there's no need to export from Revit, uh, everything is done inside, uses all of the uh, info, so it's really efficient at using all of the parameters within Revit to do its calculations. And then when it comes to export, all of that is done also inside of Revit. So uh, it creates those as uh, Revit sheets, so you have all of the information within the Revit, so you can use that uh, further on if you want to create some sort of schedules using that information, place it on sheets next to uh, existing views, and so on and so forth. So it's a very exciting uh, plugin, and I'm going to be talking about it in depth uh, a bit later on in one of the other tutorials. Uh, and tell me, of course, uh, down below in the comments, is that something that you're interested in and looking forward to? Now let's talk a little bit about thermal efficiency and why that is so important. So thermal efficiency is really important when it comes to uh, building uh, buildings and buildings tend to use up a lot of power uh, when it comes to just operating and keeping uh, all of us occupants comfortable inside. Uh, so buildings do tend to use a lot of energy and it's important to keep this energy loss to a minimum, not only because it's very important for the environment, but also it tends to keep the running costs of the building quite low. As architects and engineers, we have a lot of design decisions to make and these design decisions can impact the thermal efficiency of the building. Uh, that is that includes the building position and orientation. Uh, it's the layout of the building uh, or which room is facing which side. Uh, it has to take into consideration the whole overall shape of the building and is it an efficient shape, uh, the size and positioning of the windows, and also a little additions such as a roof overhang, louver systems, and so on and so forth. All of this will affect the thermal efficiency of our buildings. Now, when it comes to making informed design decisions, we do have to have some sort of feedback on how our design affects the thermal efficiency of the building. Uh, so there is uh, a few external software that you can use in order to calculate the uh, thermal efficiency of the building and I'm going to include a list of those uh, pieces of software over here so you can check them out. Now when it comes to working in Revit and uh, communicating with third-party software uh, for the, this thermal analysis, you have a few different options. So the first uh, option, the, the kind of the main uh, first option would be to export all of your views to AutoCAD. So all of your floor plans, elevations, sections, and so on, you would export that to AutoCAD and then those AutoCAD drawings would be important in the third-party software for this analysis. Uh, now, naturally, this is quite a, an awful uh, approach, uh, mainly because there is a lot of information inside of Revit, well, building uh, information modeling, there's information in the model, and then when you export that into CAD, uh, those CAD lines don't really include the information about the materials and their properties. So uh, it's a very bad solution in that way. And also, uh, when it comes to making some design changes, uh, you would have to repeat the whole process, export everything again, and then import it into that same uh, third-party software. So it is very uh, inefficient and slow. Now, a second way of communicating with third-party software would be to export your, uh, your Revit projects into the IFC file format. Now, the IFC file format is a very important file format. It's, I've created a whole video on that topic, so check it out if you're interested in, in that and learning more about it. Just type in 
uh, IFC Balkan Architect uh, and you'll find the video. So as I mentioned in that video and whenever I use the uh, IFC file format, it does tend to have uh, a lot of problems and issues that might come up. So it's not really uh, that efficient. It's this, of course, much more efficient than just exporting to CAD, but it does have many issues uh, uh, along the way. And finally, we have perhaps the uh, best out of the three. Uh, the solution is to export to GBXML uh, file format. Uh, now, this uh, file format is uh, something that uh, does include all of the data from uh, Revit, all of the uh, kind of the, the, the thermal analysis data, the spaces. It includes the information on the, the layers, the positioning uh, of the building, and much, much more. So it does include all of the, the information that we require. Uh, but of course, as anything that's kind of still being developed, it does have uh, a few issues along the way when it comes to uh, exporting uh, using this file format. And also the, the, the uh, GB stands for uh, green building in the name. So that's something interesting. Now, due to improvements in the building uh, materials, insulation and design in the last few decades, uh, the thermal bridge part of the equation has became more and more important in the whole design. Uh, now, it's uh, not the best idea to rely on all of the catalog values supplied by the manufacturers. It's usually the best idea to have the ability to calculate those thermal bridges. Uh, and uh, one of the option is one of the options is the plugin that I have mentioned in the beginning of this video. Okay, and now uh, let's move into Revit and see what does Revit have to offer and how does Revit actually look at buildings uh, when it comes to uh, thermal efficiency. And here we are in Revit. So uh, this is the project that I'm going to be using for this demonstration. This is the uh, complete house in Revit uh, project. Uh, if you're looking for a course where I show you how to uh, model this whole house and then how to produce all of the necessary project documentation, how to detail everything, uh, that's all available on my uh, website, balkanarchitect.com, and the link to that is going to be in the description. Okay, anyways, now, now let's take a look at what Revit has to offer when it comes to thermal analysis. And I'm going to be going here to the first level uh, floor plan well, the only level floor plan. And then uh, here, uh, when it comes to Revit and thermal analysis, here we have the analysis tab, and then we have, well, a bunch of options. Uh, now, one of those options is the space tool. Now, uh, just like the rooms that we have here, rooms are more for architectural information. As you can see here, when we take a look at this, we really only have the basic information here in the properties. We have the uh, we have the area of the room, uh, the perimeter, the uh, unbound height, the, uh, well, we can calculate the volume for that, but that's that's kind of basic. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can add some uh, finish uh, parameters, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much it for these rooms. But if we go here to spaces, and let's just click on spaces, you can see it looks kind of like a room. So it looks like you're applying a room over this existing room. So let's place a space there. And let's place it here and here and let's, yeah, let's add spaces everywhere here in the project, just like this. There we go. Now we have spaces. Uh, now something that you'll notice as soon as we get out of the space tool, it's not going to display those spaces anymore. Now you can find them if you hover over that room. Okay, here we go. There's the space. So it's just going to, again, just like a room, it's going to kind of display with that little uh, cross symbol. And if you just, as you can see here, this is the, the space and this is the room. Now it's kind of difficult to see and to select. So what they like to do is go here to the properties panel for the view, uh, go to the visibility graphics overrides, and then go to edit. And then there, if we scroll down and model categories all the way down to spaces, if I expand that and check both the interior and reference and hit apply and OK, now it's going to display all of those spaces, which is kind of handy because it's uh, a lot easier to see. 
Now also for these spaces you can actually group them into zones. So here if we have this uh, we have this uh, HVAC zone option and for example you can use that uh, in this case in order to uh, create a zone inside of this house. So if I go here into edit zone here as you can see currently it only recognizes the living room uh, as, the, as a zone but we can add spaces so I can add here the dining area, the entrance, the kitchen and maybe all of these and perhaps for this zone I don't want to include the, the garage because perhaps you don't want to heat or cool the garage area that's that's usually some uh, something that where you don't really want to waste any energy so we can maybe leave that out and then uh, hit finish editing that zone uh, also for this zone if we go to annotate uh, we do have the option to get by a uh, tag by category and then you can as you can see here you can add a uh, a tag for that. Now currently we don't really have any tags loaded in so we can load it in. I'm not going to at this point uh, but you get the point so as you can see that's a zone. It kind of highlights as all of these. Uh, so anyways uh, once we have created these spaces you're going to notice that they are a lot easier to, to use to kind of pull information out of these when it comes to thermal analysis. Uh, so for example here if you select this living air living room or let's go with the, with the bedroom perhaps because we have already seen that one. So here when you select the space it's going to say space here in the properties and here as you can see we have a lot more information. So here we have some uh, electrical lighting uh, information, we also have uh, electrical lighting loads, we have the, the main the dimension which is good we already had that uh, but then also we have the mechanical ones so here for the flow as you can see we have a lot more parameters here which you can edit and so on here we have the zone for the anal uh, energy analysis and let's expand this a little bit uh, so here you can set up the condition type let's see so is it heated or uncooled? Is it just heated, just cooled? And so on. Uh, here the space type. So what kind of a space type is it? So here as you can see we have many, many different options. It can be a dining area or a, uh, let's see, do we have something like a sleeping area or something like that? sleeping quarters, well this is for a police station, but you get the point, you can find uh, uh, everything here and then use that for the space type settings. Uh, next we have the construction type, so we have that uh, as well. So it's going to pull in all of the information that's uh, used inside of the model, which is cool. Uh, next we have people, so <laughs> how many people and so on, uh, electrical loads and so on and so forth. So for example here for the uh, for the garage we can say that here it says it's uh, maybe we can just say it's ventilated uh, or naturally ventilated only or something like that because we're not going to be heating it or cooling it. Anyways uh, we have oops, we have that option and then also here we have the uh, heating and cooling uh, loads which allows you to create a quick little report so uh, what you can do is calculate that so as you can see here is the building with all of our zones. Uh, here we can input information for the location, the uh, project uh, function, let's see, building service, building envelope, uh, yeah, so the building type here it's set to office, let's set it to something like a single family home and then uh, we can calculate this and that is going to generate us a report. So here we have a loads report, uh, here we have a pro project summary and then it's going to use all of the project information to generate uh, this uh, report which you can use for uh, kind of to inform your design uh, going on from here. So those are the kind of the, the little overview of just some of the options that we have when it comes to uh, the energy analysis or thermal analysis for your buildings in Revit. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and uh, I'm going to be creating more tutorials on this information in the future if you guys like it. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quick little tutorial. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. And also make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. There I have uh, many, many more advanced courses on Revit, both 
on beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced topics. So make sure to check it out. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quick little video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.